Welcome back to our lesson part two on mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So here we're going to start to learn about um, how to actually solve for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So what we mentioned last time is that the pitcher wants to make the batter indifferent between planning for a fastball or a curveball. If the batter is not indifferent, I, if there's a choice he or she prefers, well, the pitcher is doing something wrong, right? If if the batter looks at hitting a fastball and hitting a curveball and says, wow, I, I get on base more by planning for the fastball, that means the batter should just plan for the fastball every time the pitcher's being exploited. So the pitcher needs to throw slightly more curveballs, you know, right? Because if the batter's planning for the fastball, remember, they will do far worse when the pitcher throws a curveball, which is good for the pitcher. So if the batter's not indifferent, the pitcher needs to adjust the amount of fastballs versus curveballs. So if the batter is preferring one pitch or the other, the, curve, the pitcher needs to adjust uh, what he or she would pitch to make the batter indifferent. So to make the batter indifferent, I'm actually going to do is I'm going to escape, pull this out. Um, I'm going to copy this into a word file so I can have this in the background because it's useful to have this up on the screen. So the optimum here for the pitcher occurs when the batter is indifferent. So to make the batter indifferent, what do we what does the pitcher need to do? Well, the hitter is going to have some expected value of planning for a fastball and some expected value for planning for a curveball, right? Every time, so if the hitter plans for a fastball, the hitter gets on base 7% of the time when the pitcher throws a fastball and only 2% of the time when the pitcher throws a curveball. So the question is, how do we get that, how do we relate that into solving for the equilibrium? Well. What is the expected payoff, right? What's the expected value if the hitter plans for a fastball? Well, 7% of the time, the hitter will get a hit if the pitcher throws a fastball. And we're going to represent P. Uh, P will be the probability the pitcher throws a fastball. So this P percent of the time, when the pitcher throws a fastball, the hitter gets on base 7% of the time. The remainder of the time, which is 1 minus P, right? If the pitcher's not throwing a fastball, he or she's throwing a curveball. So 1 minus P percent of the time, the pitcher's throwing a, cur a curveball. Um, when that occurs, the hitter gets on base 2% of the time, 0.02. So the hitter's expected value from planning for a fastball is 0.07 times P plus 0.02 times 1 minus P, or 0.07 times the probability the pitcher throws a fastball, 0.02 times the probability the pitcher throws a curveball. Right, this is the hitter's expected value. If the hitter plans for a curveball, what is the hitter's payoff? Now in just a moment I'm going to go down and reveal this, but what I'd like you to do now is pause this, and before we get to this point, I'd like you to try to work out what these numbers are on your own. Um, work out what the numbers are for uh, what the expected value is for the hitter when they plan for a curveball. Okay, I'm going to resume now. So if the hitter plans for a curveball, well, when the pitcher throws a fastball, which occurs with, as we said before, probability p, only 1% of the time does the hitter get on base. But if the, hitter, but if the pitcher throws a curveball, uh, the hitter gets on base 8% of the time. So we, you know, these two equations, this is the expected value for the hitter when planning for a fastball and the expected value for the hitter planning for a curveball. Now what I think is the single thing that trips up the most students on this lesson is that the pitcher's job is to figure out how to make the batter indifferent. So these are the equations of the expected value for the hitter, right? This is the expected, you know, what this is the amount of the time the hitter is getting on base when planning for a fastball, right? This is that's what this equation says or you could put EV fastball, like FB equals 0.07 times P plus 0.02 times 1 minus P. Um, and this is the expected value the hitter gets on base 
um, when planning for a curveball. But it's the pitcher who needs to use these equations because the pitcher is the only one who controls the p or the 1 minus p. Right? The hitter's expected value from hitting a fastball is going to depend on how often the pitcher throws a fastball and how often the pitcher throws a curveball. So the expected value for the hitter is, you know, it's crucial, you know, whatever this number is, it's going to completely depend on how often the pitcher decides to throw a fastball or throw a curveball. Same with the expected value for throwing a curveball. And this is what the pitcher has to do. The pitcher has to make the hitter indifferent. We know these two equations. The pitcher controls the probability they throw the fastball or curveball. So the pitcher has all the power here in order to make the hitter indifferent. And if the, hit, and the pitcher is doing their job, you know, in a game theory sense, they will do this. They will mix the probability of throwing a fastball or a curveball. So the pitcher chooses the probability P to make the batter indifferent. Well, you just set those two equations equal to each other, and then you solve, right? And this is just algebra, but it's, you know, it's funny. You, I, I get, uh, as far as looking at the mistakes, you'll get some on mixing up you know, the expected value for the hitter, and then they forget that it's the pitcher who has that probability P that, you know, is controlling this probability the pitcher throws the fastball. That is some of the errors. A lot of the other errors just come to simple algebra errors, so do be careful when you go through these. Um, it's worth taking your time on this algebra. It's so simple, so easy, uh, easy to make a mistake. So if you go through and solve this, you solve it for P. Right. And I would say you should probably pause and try to solve on your own right now. I am going to go through and put these on the screen. And I hope you tried it on your own. If you did and you found that the that p equals 1 half, you got the right answer here. And what this indicates, well, what did we say p was before? p is the probability the pitcher throws a fastball. So for the pitcher to make the hitter indifferent, the pitcher should throw a fastball half the time and a curveball half the time. That is the that's the only percentage of the time that's the only percentage of fastballs versus curveballs that's going to make the hitter indifferent in this case. So the pitcher should throw a fastball half the time and the pitcher should throw a curveball half the time. That is uh, you know that's the pitcher's part in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So that's the strategy the pitcher should be playing. The pitcher should be, you know, we talk about the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium you know, we talked before of Nash equilibrium and saying, well, prisoner A will choose confess and prisoner B would choose to confess. Well, here, the pitcher, which is one of the players, their strategy is throw a fastball half the time, throw a curveball half the time. But we're only halfway there because we haven't figured out what the strategy is for the hitter yet. So what do we need to do? Uh, graphically, I'm going to wait. That I will be showing that in class on the graphically, how we show this. Uh, the book also has uh, some examples. For now, we're just going through a little bit of the equations here. So the optimal strategy for the batter. Let's go back to this, right? The hitter. Um, well, the hitter needs to make the pitcher indifferent between throwing a fastball and throwing a curveball right? The pitcher is going to get some expected value for throwing a fastball and some expected value for throwing a curveball. The hitter wants to make the pitcher indifferent because if the pitcher is not indifferent it means the pitcher basically is exploiting the hitter and doing very well. So the batter or the hitter wants to make the pitcher indifferent between throwing a fastball and a curveball so he or she must randomize the amount of the time uh, preparing for a fastball or a curveball. So if the pitcher throws a fastball, what is her payoff? Well, that's 0.93 times Q plus 0.99 times 1 minus Q. So here, Q is the probability the batter is planning for a fastball. Uh, 1 minus Q is the probability the batter is planning for a curveball. So the pitcher, 93% of the time, um, and gets a payoff of 0.93, which means 93% of the time the hitter doesn't get on base. Payoff of 0.93 whenever the batter is planning for a fastball, but a payoff of 0.99 whenever the batter is planning for a curveball. So if the hitter plans to hit a curveball, what is the pitcher's payoff? 
take a moment, try to write out this equation on your own without me, and then just a moment, uh, well, I think you should pause this to do this, in just a moment, then I will show the, what the equation is. That's 0.98 times Q plus 0.982 times 1 minus Q. So it's important here that you know, you're dealing with the pitcher, the pitcher is dealing with the second payoff in each case, right? Pitcher, if they throw a fastball, they get 0.93 or 0.99 for their payoff. If they throw a curveball, they get 0.98 or 0.92 for their payout. Um, and the 0.98, well, you know, when the pitcher throws a curveball, the 0.98 comes when the hitter's planning for a fastball. The 0.92 comes when the hitter's planning for the curveball. What I'd like you to do now is solve for Q on your own. Bring that to class, and we're going to be going through several more of these exercises in class, as well as um, we'll be working through the graph, how this looks graphically as well uh, in class. We're, this is one of the trickier lessons. It is really worth spending a lot of time making sure you understand the mechanics of how this works, because I can pretty well guarantee you're going to be seeing this on an exam. It's one of the, to me, this is one of the cornerstones of the game theory class, is understanding this idea behind mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. A couple last notes before we end uh, this video. What if the assumptions don't hold? So we assume each side knows these probabilities, like knows every, all of the information, and that's kind of an assumption we make throughout the course. But in the real world, we know that's not true. There are many times where, there are many times it will be true, but there are many times it won't be. People just won't know exactly what these probabilities are. Uh, and if they don't know, well, th then you may need to change your behavior to exploit the weaknesses of your opponent. Uh, likewise, if each party knows the other party will behave optimally. If you know that your opponent will behave optimally, then you need to resort to a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Like, you need to mix your strategies. But if you're a pitcher and you know that your opponent always plans for a fastball you know, to their detriment, if they always plan for a fastball, there's no need to get tricky. Just throw a curveball every time. As long as you throw a curveball every time, then you will be doing far better off than if you threw a fastball some of the time. Now, on something like pitching versus hitting, right, the, eventually the batter's going to figure it out, and that's probably going to lead you towards some mixed strategy that's close to the optimum. But there are times when one side just won't behave optimally, and if so, all of this work we did actually doesn't mean anything. We, you don't need to go through it. If one side can be exploited, you don't need to mix your strategies. You just need to exploit your opponent. So if your opponent's inferior, you don't need to go through this. The good news, the bad news is for you, I guess, is that uh, we're still got to do it for the class. But how could mixed strategy, Nash equilibrium, be applied? Pricing schemes, advertising, and of course, gaming in general. Just stra you know, strategies where randomizing your moves can pay off.